welcome everybody and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we're really grateful and appreciative and uh, thank you especially for your patience as we try to work through a few technical uh, technical things here. Uh, my name is Liz Christofferson. I am the owner of Empower Consulting Group. I'm the sponsor, host, and moderator for today's session. Uh, and I also am the instructor for the Explore Design Launch Program through Mission Community Services. Um, I provide some things to the organization that uh, is designed to help the entre aspiring entrepreneurs put together their business plans. And um, it's a joy and a pleasure to be able to do that. It's my way to give back to my local community. And I'm really excited to um, share this session uh, with you today with Kathy Marco. But before I introduce her, I just want to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. Uh, we do have a good size audience and out of respect for time and for each other, please be sure you limit your distractions and mute your phone. If you've joined by phone, um, a copy of the recording and the presentation will be available. Um, it is being recorded, so if you miss a portion, you need to leave early, don't worry, you'll get access to the recording. Um, so let me just assure you, you can type questions into the chat box or into the question box uh, to help you interact with us. And I know Kathy's got some really good content, some really good opportunities for you to chime in and share about your experience, um, plus some things that will lift us all up. So let me tell you a little bit about Kathy. Kathy Markov is deeply committed to creating respectful workplaces and to encourage and grow um, employee engagement. Uh, she has an amazing experience spanning 20 years developing workforces, training on organizational behavior, um, train the trainer program, strategic planning, um, all kinds of things related to talent development, people development. Uh, she's also a board member for Mission Community Services and um, vice president of the Human re for the Human Resources Association here locally. So Kathy, before you dive in though, I'd love to have you share with people on the call um, how you got started in your business and what you really love about it. Oh, well, Liz, thank you so much. It's, it's wonderful to be here. With those of you who are able to join us today to talk about refocus and find the opportunity. So I am the owner and founder of Mark of Executive Training. And really, you know, I am have been following my passion and my love of training. I was a Peace Corps volunteer a long time ago in the 80s in Papua New Guinea in the South Pacific. And I had really no idea what I wanted to do in the world, except I know I wanted to be of service. And the country director was a master trainer for the US Peace Corps. And she took me under her wing and really helped me get started in the world of professional development and training. Because at the end of the day, Peace Corps is truly a training organization for the communities with which volunteers serve, but also for the volunteers themselves. And so that's really been my passion. And you know, I'll touch a little bit on where I am with my business and pieces of, of my story and tell a lot of other stories at this very interesting and unusual time. Um, and so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll kind of dive into that now. So as uh, Liz said, uh, this is sponsored by the, the Mission Community Services and Women's Business Center. I'm on the board, have been for a very long time. I believe in the organization. I'm so grateful that you guys are here. Uh, this is a picture of me and my family. So this is what really makes me live. Uh, I, I do love my job, but it's all for these guys right here. And my hope for the session today is that you will be able to better navigate these uncertain times, be able to handle the stress and take care of yourself, adapt in this rapidly changing business uh, landscape by crafting contingency plans to refocus on any new opportunities that may service and develop a new perspective so that uh, you can get to uh, being there for the people and the things that matter most to you. 
So this was me about four weeks ago. Uh, I was facilitating a strategic planning for a nonprofit organization in our community. I was up in Atascadero and uh, this was a community uh, organization, a nonprofit in the medical field. And it was interesting. I'd been following what had been happening um, overseas in China. Uh, you know, concerned about it, obviously, but I walked in the door at uh, noon, we were going from noon to six, and we couldn't move forward because the executive director, who's a remarkable professional, just was not able to move forward without discussing the rare, very real possibility that within the next week, they were going to completely run out of masks and other kinds of PPE, a, a term that we all know now uh, for the organization and having the board of directors there, we really need to focus on that. And what was initially to develop a five-year strategic plan ended up really being a day spent doing uh, contingency planning. Throughout the day, people had to get up and leave because this was a day that schools in the North County of San Luis Obispo were being shut. And uh, this was the day that there were medical people around the room and uh, uh, patients were coming in and the medical system was beginning to really feel the pain of this uh, over and above just the lack of PPE. When I left, uh, there was a run on the gas stations. I was concerned whether I would get gas to get home and people were buying toilet paper. So, uh, yeah, welcome, COVID-19. I mean, who would have ever thought that this was where we would be in 2020? Uh, I think there's no way, easy way out of this. And uh, if I can make the assumption, if you're on the call, like me as a small business person, we are trying to figure out what this means. So first things first, we all know this, wash your hands, you know, cough into a tissue or your elbow, avoid touching your face. This is vital, not only for us, but for everyone else. You know, I've heard that it's a firefighter analogy. You, know, you hope that your neighbors cut down their weeds so that your house uh, doesn't, uh, even though you may be doing everything right, so that your house doesn't burn down. So a tough analogy for those of us who have lived most of their lives here in beautiful central coast of California, but this is true. We need to do those things not only for ourselves, but for everyone else to stay home. I'm watching this very closely because I deeply believe, you know, there are always opportunities in anything that happens. And so, uh, like probably most of you, I'm, I'm reading a lot about it. And I found an article by a guy I really admire. His name is Nicholas Kristof from the New York Times. This was in yesterday's uh, or, um, paper. He said, brace yourself for waves of coronavirus infection. And I think as business people, as much as we don't want to really think that this is what is happening, this is true. So social distancing does succeed in slowing the contagion, but honestly, we're not gonna get rid of this until there is uh, either a vaccine or a, a successful way to treat it or some kind of herd immunity and it becomes something like a cold. Uh, these things are not easy lifts. Uh, we're a good 18 months, couple of years away from um, really being in a place where social distancing won't be something that is on the forefront of our mind. Um, you know, pandemics, they're like oil tankers. They continue to move long after you put the brakes on. We're hopeful today that we're seeing some brakes putting, being put on in New York. I am grateful to be in California. I think our governor moved very swiftly. We haven't seen the kind of outbreak like they have on the East Coast, but I fear that other parts of our country and certainly other parts of the world will be living with this for a long time. This virus is really resilient and there's a warning and not only from Nicholas Kristof, I was listening to an epidemiologist yesterday talking about how uh, there will be waves and waves of infection. Um, until we get some kind of a vaccine and it could be a long time. So uh, in this article, wonderful Nicholas Kristof did put this. He said, I interrupt this uh, bleakness for a dose of upliftment. In Oregon, there was a 103 year old William Lapschke's 
caught in, in the, with the coronavirus uh, in early March, but he recovered. He recovered in time to celebrate his 104th birthday with pizza and chocolate cake. So there is hope, all is not lost. But if you're anything like me, you know, this has brought a lot of anxiety and unease and nervousness. And it really is important that we are aware of that. Self-awareness is the foundation of any kind of success that we see in, the, in ourselves and in the world. And uh, so dealing with anxiety at this point is important. First, we want to divine uh, what it is. So anxiety is a feeling of worry or nervousness, unease. It's typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. So this is clearly what we're dealing with right now. We don't know what's going to happen. It can come up when we don't have enough information to accurately predict the future. We don't know what the future holds. This is what we're seeing right now. So uncertainty uh, and ambiguity abound. And we can be overwhelmed by this uncertainty and fear of the future. And the rational parts of our brain will go offline. So logically, we know that we don't need six months supply of toilet paper, but when we go to the grocery store uh, with our masks and our gloves on uh, and we see someone with hoarding toilet paper, this makes us nervous. That's what was happening four weeks ago when I left Atascadero after that contingency planning session. So I want to share with you uh, a little uh, PSA. So this is uh, an, um, something that I, I want to share with you. So let me um, let me move to a different screen, and hopefully this will be able to come out better for you. Here we go. I know it says uh, waiting. There we go. So here we go. Uh, I'm sorry if the audio is not bad. Do let us know. And then um, this one has. Uh, Closed captioning, so that's helpful. Oh, right So I hope you're able to hear that, you know, just a little humor here. We've got to begin to laugh at, at this. So uh, we, we, of course, she has a good message about staying home, but you may be like her too. I know I've been making a lot of mistakes, not perfect. Uh, this is what the Gallup organization said. They said the future normal is still being developed and that we are all overwhelmed with information and misinformation. So we need to develop some kind of kindness to ourselves. This cycle of anxiety that we have, we need to find a way of breaking it. And there are really two things we need to do. First, we need to understand that we are getting anxious and panicky. Uh, everything to me feels different and it may feel that way to you. And so we need to recognize that that is what we're experiencing and what the result of that is. Uh, uh, and so this is really important. You know, my business has collapsed um, and the concern is, you know, am I going to go broke? But how can I break that cycle? I know deep down that I learned so much building this business uh, that I'm in an even better place to reinvent it. Um, other things I can think to break the cycle, you know, I've always been resourceful. I can take advantage of all the resources to help me now. Um, other things to keep my anxiety at bay, I've always wanted to develop online training opportunities rather than only rely on live training. So now's my time to do it. So this is the way by breaking that cycle that we're able to begin to think again. And this is important. And uh, that's why I like that little funny PSA because she wasn't thinking clearly. And I think we need to recognize that perhaps maybe many of us are not. 
There was an article just yesterday in the New York Times that said, trouble focusing, not sleeping, you may be grieving. And, and this was interesting to me too. Uh, I believe that this is the case. So there's something called the grief wheel. And I do believe that we're experiencing this now. No matter who you are, even if you're still working, uh, there's loss associated with this. My son, who was in college at San Diego State, came home. And while he's thrilled to be home, uh, you know, he's missing his friends. He's lost that last uh, time in San Diego, living with uh, his roommates and um, being in San Diego. Everyone ex is experiencing loss. And we enter into this wheel of shock, protest, disorganization, and reorganization. And we may go around and around and around in this wheel, but the goal here is to emerge recovered and not deteriorate. So the question I wanna be asking you, I'm gonna go through each of these phases, but where are you on this wheel? Uh, how will you emerge? And my, my wish for you is that you rem emerge recovered. And so let's look at this grief wheel in a little bit more detail. First thing, you know, it's the old adage when you're on an airplane, you have to put your oxygen mask on first. So in this session, I'm not gonna make you feel like you need to get off your butt and think about the next major blockbuster idea, or write that book or come up with something, you know, magical that's never been done before. Um, in fact, this particular moment in history, maybe your time to rest, to relax, to regroup, to refocus. I've been teaching classes on stress and time management, attitude management for years. And we live in a world where people are working 24-7. Um, We're all tied to our cell phones as our electronic leash, uh, exchanging emails in the middle of the night. This may be the time for us just to unplug for a while and get re-established in who we are and what's important for this, so for us. The one thing I can tell you is that we will absolutely get through this. So here's the shock, right? I love this. Uh, the year 2020 is brought to you by the letters WTF. This was actually sent to me by the woman who is the executive director of that organization I was doing the strategic planning for. So, you know, what this brings to mind is looking at motivation. We may be in shock and we may feel what's wrong with us. We're not motivated. Let's look a little bit at what motivation is. So motivation is the satisfaction of needs. And I don't think there's anyone on the planet right now who hasn't experienced a different level of need at the moment. And this is important. So I always go back to Maslow and I love, you know, Tony Robbins, the motivational speaker, but this is how, how uh, the, the satisfaction of needs takes place. And really that's what Maslow was talking about in his uh, hierarchy of needs. The first level of need is existence. Existence. We need to uh, uh, know that the sun is going to come up in the morning. If it doesn't, we'd be pretty freaked out. Now, existence uh, is something that's built on certainty. I know the sun's gonna come out tomorrow, but if it's so sunny all the time, we get bored. We want a little uncertainty or variety. So in existence, there's these dual things of certainty and uncertainty. Then we cannot move on to developing relationships or relatedness until our basic existence needs are met. Now in there is food, shelter, all of our physical needs. Uh, Maslow even put sex into our existence needs. Safety needs are within existence. We need to feel certain that we're safe. Uh, then we begin to think about how we relate to other people. And this has to do with love and connection, and significance. So love and connection is that you are part of a group of people that you are proud of, that you love, that you're connected with. You are one with other folks. Significance is that within that group or maybe somewhere in your life, there is something special that is just about you. There's nobody else that does that. And you're recognized for that. That's your significance. 
You know, it could be, oh, I'm the one that puts on the events for mission community services. Or it could be, I'm the one that ensures that the kitchen counters have been Clorox before we go to bed. So that's, you know, in this day and age. But we cannot think about these things until our existent needs are met. And that's when we get, as Maslow called it, self-actualization. Self-actualization is doing what you need to do in order to fully express yourself as a human being. And that, of course, is built on growth. So you're growing, developing, and unfolding as a human, doing what you are meant to do in the world. And by that, you're able to make a contribution. You're able to give back. So it's about bringing in the things that help you grow, develop, and unfold, and then giving it out into the world. This is when we're fully self-actualized. And you know, I'll be so bold as to make an assumption if you're on this call that you have had the opportunity to be self-actualized in your life, to be able to fully be who you are as a human and to give your gifts in the world. But this crisis that we're experiencing, this global crisis, has immediately put us all down to existence. We're wondering, am I sick? Am I not sick? How do I get my groceries in? Do I have enough? Do I have enough money to pay the mortgage, the rent? What's happening with my family members? All of these things, we're down at existence. We're trying to make certain that we're positioning ourselves in a way not only to survive this, but to thrive in the future. So I say this because I want you to have some grace with yourself. Uh, again, uh, I think I know I've put pressure on myself to think, oh boy, now I've got time to write that book to start those online classes. And honestly, for a month, I have not done those things. It's been enough just for me to reorganize my house, set up my office in the garage so my son can move back into his room, be able to ensure that my elderly parents are not going out and that we're able to safely bring them food and groceries that are not going to be contaminated. And that's okay for right now. So it's important though that we are self-aware of where we are. And then we move up this by developing connections with other people and building our way back up to being self-actualized. But we're still early into the crisis. So I want to share with you some stories. This is Candy. She's a dog trainer from Salt Lake City. And this is what she says. There was nothing for someone like me. As soon as you say you're self-employed, you're done. I live with three rescue dogs and five chickens. I actually earned five to $6,000 a month, sometimes as much as 10,000. I was book solid spring. I had to turn some clients away. But over three days last month, everyone canceled. I have no money coming in. This is the first time in 20 years I've had to worry. I was like, oh my God, my whole world's falling apart. The first week I was a mess. I was so depressed, so sickened. But you can't worry about what you can't control. I'm strong and I always have been. Thank God for my chickens. They've been giving me eggs when I can't find any in the store. So I love that because she's transitioning from that shock and moving up Maslow towards really looking uh, particularly at some gratitude. So my question for you is, where are your chickens? Are you able to take advantage of some of the things that were presented last week through Mission Community Services? Are the, the loans from the SBA, were you able to get unemployment? Do you have some savings, some family resources? Things perhaps we never uh, thought we'd have to rely on, but now we do. And it's important that we count our chickens and be thankful for them, right? Let everything happen to you. Beauty, terror, just keep going. No feeling is final. I actually love this. I love in my life that I have, you know, been in the rainforest of Papua New Guinea with indigenous people living off the land without electricity, without running water. And I've been in London at the Savoy Hotel uh, having New Year's with in a big ballroom, black tie with royal family members in the audience. So all of that, the breadth of experience is what makes us really living to our fullest. But as Winston Churchill says, if you're going through hell, you just got to keep going. 
the best journey, uh, in the best journeys, uh, answer questions that in the beginning you didn't even think to ask. So this is our opportunity for us to ask some questions that maybe we didn't think to ask. What questions are you asking yourself? Uh, will this help you move, this will help you move past the shock. So some things I'm asking, you know, how would I be able to do what I do that helps me self-actualize, but do it in a safe way that's remote in nature? And what opportunities would present themselves for that? So the next thing is the protest. No, this isn't happening, right? Well, it is happening. So it's important though to recognize when we're protesting, we can't move forward until we go through all of this. So I sent this article to a girlfriend of mine. It says, I refuse to run a coronavirus homeschool. And this was a, a friend who's an HR director of a large company. They had to lay off two thirds of their employees. The others were all transitioned to working remotely. They shut down two divisions of what they were doing. Uh, she's had to manage all that, apply for small business loans to help them stay in business, rehire people in order to take advantage of those loans. And on top of that, she's being asked to homeschool her two elementary school children, and she's a single mom. So my goodness, we are all handling a lot. And I know that she, you know, is wanting to say, ah, stop. Here's Laura from New Jersey. She says, perhaps instead of trying to be productive, people could learn to uh, be comfortable being alone with themselves. No spinning of emotional plates in the air, no distractions, no productivity. Just learn to be comfortable being alone in your own company. Master this and you will enrich your own life. And then the ep and when the epidemic is over, others will enjoy and appreciate your company much more. So this is important. If you're protesting, it's okay. Um, you can't be strong all the time. Sometimes you just need to be alone and let your tears out. Another story, this is June from California. For some reason I have, my, uh, I have in my head uh, this thing that I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not doing it. I feel a bit like failure. I ignored my sister when she tagged me in a push-up challenge on Instagram. Instead, I started a gratitude journal and I'm working on practicing acceptance. The feeling is that you're supposed to be inventing something or coming up with the next big business idea or doing something great that's uh, going to be worthy of the time spent at home. I'm, oh, uh, I'm trying right now just to be okay with being. And if you're at that protest stage, then protest. You know, maybe it's time to stop trying to be productive. It's okay if you're not ready to recover. Um, this is still new and this will be with us for a long time. I believe this is a game changer for the world. You don't have to know what you need to do right now. Perhaps right now is the time for you to rest. Ralph Ellison said hibernation is a covert preparation for a more overt action. So maybe that's what you need and it's okay. So the next phase is disorganization. I love this picture. I used to teach this in customer service. I mean, why do you think of this guy? Are you gonna buy things from him? <laughs> this is Holly. She's at home in Montana and she says, I was feeling really panicky about my lack of energy or motivation. Then I had a kind of epiphany that I was sitting around but not actually recharging because I was spending so much energy feeling guilty about doing nothing. So then I started putting all my energy into doing nothing. I know that sounds funny, but it's actually true. I started focusing all that energy into feeling good about doing absolutely nothing. And it worked. When I started doing that, I started feeling so much better. I started having these bursts of energy that I could then use to do projects around the house or with my kids or thinking clearly in my head about things to do moving forward with my business. It was amazing. I'm feeling much better since doing that. Sometimes reorganization is not about an action, but it's getting your head in the right space. Something uh, getting organized, um, sometimes getting organized means just cleaning your house or sterilizing the groceries. That might be enough for today. You need to do what you need to do to settle yourself and to feel like your existence needs are being met and 
gradually move your way up to being motivated. Reorganization, of course, this is Marie Kondo. I highly recommend her method of getting your house in order. Um, and sparking joy, I love that. Um, so when you get to this point, I think there's a lot of advice from Jimmy, the artist in New York City. He said, much about survival of this epidemic depends on routine and surroundings. As an artist who has worked from my home studio for the past 15 years, there's no one to get me up, no defined hour for lunch, no book and commute. Without a set routine, I would be lost. I get up at a set time each day and follow a routine that includes coffee with the times, 30 minutes of playing on my musical instruments, a strict lunch at 11 a.m., followed by another strict 45 minute nap. I think that's a nice touch. That's what he said. <laughs> the time between is filled with work. Then 6 p.m., I clean up my brushes, put on some music, and take a 30 minute break on the day bed. Changing rooms, if you can, is important. Before I start to prepare dinner, routine followed every day, even during this crisis. Work at it, your survival, your sanity need it. So this is requiring of us really that to date myself, we need to be like Madonna. We need to reinvent ourselves. And I think the current Madonna isn't even on there, isn't she some kind of earth goddess now with a bunch of children from all over the world. So we can do it. We can reinvent ourselves. Um, and there are opportunities in that. In the end, and this will end, your success will be recovery, not deterioration, right? So um, you need to survive this time so you can thrive in the new world on the other side. And we're not always sure what that's going to look like. So again, I'm not here to tell you as small business people, you know, this is your time to uh, get everything done. And uh, this may be a time of arrest, recuperation, and make sure that you're there on the other side. You need to do whatever makes you feel safe. Um, I follow the people who wrote the work called Crucial Conversations. And this is what they said in their recent newsletter. They said, sometime we'll be crawling out of our caves with this virus still lurking. People will want to get back to work and get back to living. But in a state of heightened vigilance, the new normal will be risk mitigation and not risk elimination. Effective leaders will understand that they must not just make their customers and employees be safe, they must make them feel safe. So what do you need to do to feel safe? How can you make people feel safe around you in your sphere of influence, both your loved ones, but also your uh, uh, larger community and your audience or clients for your business? You wanna be honest and transparent with yourself and others about what's happening in your sphere of influence. You wanna fi find and provide choices for people so that everyone feels safe and be empathetic with yourself at others. Right now, you can put behaviors in place that will build resistance and prepare you to emerge from COVID-19 uh, stronger and be prepared for anything unexpected that happens. So do something today that your future self will be thankful for. Crises always come with opportunity. Albert Einstein said, in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. And this is something that, I don't know if you've heard this before, but in Chinese, the, the, their pictorial language, uh, the character for crisis is the combination of two concepts. One is danger and the other is opportunity. So this certainly is a dangerous opportunity, but there are those who, who are able to do this, who've gone before us. This is the only crisis that has ever been surmounted. I once saw a talk by a, a man who was the fourth generation owner of a company called the Warren Featherbone Company. Now they were uh, founded in 1883 and they created out of, uh, the feather bones, they would take feathers, take off all the fuzzy part, wrap the bone of the feather in silk, 
And these pieces were used in corset, corsets for women in the 1800s. Well, there was a polymer or plastic that was developed. And literally overnight, there was no use for feather bones because the cost of the plastic was so much uh, less and it was such a higher quality product to go inside the corsets that there was no need for feather bones anymore. And rather than close up the business, the great grandfather of the man I saw decided that, hey, what do we do? What is the core of what we do? It isn't just about making feather bones. I have a whole factory full of people who have fine motor skills and they know how to sew. So he began making fire retardant clothing for children. Uh, then through that, when that was being manufactured less expensively overseas, this guy's grandfather, now in the next generation, he realized what he was able to do on his factory floor is teach workforce training people. And then he got into being a university, this particular guy who taught, the third generation now, and then philanthropic endeavors. So again, like Madonna, we have the opportunity to reinvent, reinvent. And we like to think that we're in charge of when and how we reinvent. But sometimes the outside world, the business environment, the global environment descends upon us. And so we need to make changes um, even though we have maybe hadn't thought about it. So here's a local company. I actually know uh, this family, the Daniels family. My children went to school with some of their children. Daniels Woodlands, they build these amazing, well, that's how it started. Um, they started building tree houses and they got a lot of fame down in LA building tree houses that actually could be like guest houses in people's backyards. They had electric and internet. I've been in some of these amazing structures. And then they started building things like uh, sets for TV and movies. And they were going overseas. I know they built a, a, an amusement park in Saudi Arabia. I mean, just amazingly successful. They're in Paso Robles. They're right there. As you go to Tin City, you'll go right by Daniels Woodland. Well, these guys have always been heroes of mine. And did you know what they did? There was an article in the Tribune. Daniels Woodland is now manufacturing protective gowns. They had a, a staff of about 100 and uh, they put in 100 workstations where they needed two people to begin to develop and assemble long sleeve poly ethylene gowns that break down to the knee. So they're not making masks, but they're making these protective gowns, which was finding a need and filling it. I mean, that is really incredible. This is one of my favorite wineries here on the Central Coast, Marjoram. They're one of my clients. Uh, just a few days after the stay at home orders, they announced that in a certain radius from Ventura up to Paso Robles, they would hand deliver wine to people in the area. So for them, you know, they're trying to uh, expand what they do. I think this is wonderful. Gilda Radner, one of my favorite comedians, she said, life is about not knowing, having to change taking the moment and making the best of it without what, knowing what's going to happen next. Delicious ambiguity. Now, again, I haven't thought that the last month has been terribly delicious, but there have been little tidbits of things that have been quite lovely. And as this moves on, I'm getting better and better. And my wish for you is that you also find that you get better and better. We can't be stuck in our old ways. We need to embrace the new. So here are some trends in the time of COVID-19, social distancing. And as I mentioned before, epidemiologists and Nicholas Kristof, we're probably gonna have waves of this. Uh, economic downturn, we've already seen that. We had more people apply for unemployment in the last three weeks than the entire recession of 2008. That's unbelievable. Now they say the only difference between a recession and a depression is whether or not you have a job. So this is um, something for you to think about. What is it that you can do now? How can you take advantage of these kinds of things and be of service to your community and the world? Well-being, physical, emotional, mental, mindset. 
So these trends, actually, there are opportunities here. According to the New York Times, people are spending more time on the internet, but um, on devices other than their phones. They're on their computers, on their TVs. According to the Gallup organization, people trust their neighbors more than almost anybody else. Unemployment is higher than any time during the recession, I said that, and it's all happened in the last three weeks. What do employers um, need? What do unemployed people need? Where are the opportunities? Of those organizations that have transitioned to working remotely, how many will go back to the expense of a physical space? This is something I've been thinking a lot about. What opportunities arise from that? People are getting bored and antsy at home. Can you fill a void there? Um, delivering virtual, physical, and mental health services will experience a boom. You know, I've seen so many people providing workouts at home, providing that kind of thing. I was thinking, no one's going to the chiropractor. Uh, chiropractors have the opportunity to um, develop ways that people can manipulate their own back. I've seen that done using tennis balls. A massage therapist, could you have a class on how couples can learn to give each other a massage? So the question is, what gifts can you bring once this new reality is really defined? How can you serve? That's where your opportunity lies. So the trends are global, but trust is local. This is where the opportunity are. Um, trust is really built by what's happening right here in my local environment. Is it safe for me to do this, do that? You know, personally, it's clear that my clients are not going to be holding training events for a while, live training events. Um, so uh, we're all becoming reliant on services that allow us to work and learn at home. Um, this has a profound impact on what I do. So my question is that I'm asking is, how can I give my gifts in a virtual way? The question for you is, you know, what questions are you asking yourself? How can you give your gifts? So here's your opportunity. There are professional opportunities. I mean, the same thing, find a need and meet it. The needs that maybe originally built your business are not the same needs now. What are they now? It may not be, uh, it may not be clear right now and that's okay. But if you keep thinking of being of service and sharpening your saw, this is, um, Old Stephen Covey, you know, this is a great time. Go back and get that certification, take a class. Uh, wonderful opportunities for you to catch up on all those books and, and really sharpen your saw. Look for the need to meet and to be of service. Personally, this may be time for you to rest, relax, refocus, regroup. Can we see that as a gift? And in your relationships, take care of those you love. Deepen those precious relationships even if it's remotely. Uh, we meet with my, uh, again, parents who are in their 80s. Dad has emphysema and COPD, very high risk. But we go every day, we sit outside on his patio and talk through the screen door at a great distance. Um, where are the opportunities to deepen those precious relationships? You wanna think globally, but act locally. And every drop counts. What is real for you? Your job drop may be staying healthy, both physically and mentally. Um, in this way, you know, you can be around to rebuild the normal. Uh, I have to say, I have a new appreciation for doing housework. I used to joke that, you know, housework done, does, done well kills you. But nowadays, I take pride in having my house cleaned uh, very, very deeply with bleach all the floors, all the counters. I do all the doors, all the windows, and I'm very proud of the work that I've done for the house. So what is it that you need to do? You know, uh, there's been a lot of talk about positive thinking, and this is a book that I love. Uh, it's called Rethinking Positive Thinking. We talk a lot about our SMART goals. I just wanna quickly talk about this. Of course, uh, goals are specific, measurable, realistic, and time-bound. And in that book, Rethinking Positive Thinking, they talked about something really important. And that was, and the way I interpreted it is how we look at the A. 
We talk about achievable, but what's the difference between achievable and realistic? More importantly, and especially now, I think we need to look at the A as agreed upon. What do you agree to do? What does everybody agree to do? So I'd love to do live trainings, but people aren't gonna agree to do it. Um, so this is important. We need to think about um, the ER part of SMARTER is empowerment rules. This is developing contingency plans. If then, if I feel overwhelmed and cannot think straight, then what? Well, for me, then I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna take that nap. I'm gonna watch that funny movie. I'm gonna watch Schitt's Creek again and again. I'm gonna watch the Tiger King. I have to get my mental health in place in order to move forward. Um, if I have a great idea, then how am I gonna capture those things? We need several plans, plan A, plan B, plan C. And I want you to think about your categories of goals. Don't just think professional in your business. Obviously we have to think about health. But what are your goals at this time for your family? You may be stuck in a household together or separated. How can you enrich those relationships with one another? How can you solidify the financial situation and be okay with that? Are there opportunities for you to volunteer? I love to sew. I haven't sewn for years. I pulled out my sewing machine. I'm making masks to donate to the hospital. Personal growth. You know, we never have had this kind of technology. Even during the recession 10 years ago, when I was working in workforce services, we didn't have the opportunity. You can take a master class on your telephone. This is an incredible opportunity. How can you express yourself creatively? How can you for sure have some fun during this period of time? So don't think of goals only, your smart -er goals as uh, about your business. I want you to think about a variety of things so that you can, even in this crisis, experience the richness of who you are. Maybe you'll tap into some lost and forgotten interests and hobbies and skills. And maybe that is where the next opportunity for you lies. Give yourself the grace to experience this. So we have a lot of goals and we can get pulled in a lot of directions and we can feel a lot of stress. And you might feel at the end of the day, oh, what a day. This is important for you to be self-aware about this because um, stress is actually a physical response. Your body lets off hormones, adrenaline. And this day and age, it was not to fight off a saber-toothed tiger, but we get that fight or flight. It's a physical thing. And you need to know where are you? Are you at the red zone where you're immobilized by fear? Can I go to the grocery store? Can I do this? Can I do that? What about my family? Um, your goal is to be aware of that so that you can get to the green zone and really relax and be able to make good decisions. There's great opportunity for working from home. And I don't know how many of you have been doing this for a while. I have. But I did experience this. A Stanford study in 2015 said that people are 13% more productive when they work from home. But there's some caveats on that. Um, they they uh, can be more satisfied, but there are certain things that we need to do in order to set that up. You need to develop some good habits, habits that set you up for success. Be really self-aware. Think yes before no. Don't just say, oh, I can't do that. Um, but be open for new opportunities for growth. Trust your gut, do your research, but you really don't need to have all the information in place. Move forward when you can do safely. Be curious, dedicate time not only to dreaming and researching, but learning and growing and developing and unfolding and um, get something done. Do the hardest and most important things first so you have a sense of accomplishment. To learn new habits, you need to be self-aware, create ritual and reward yourself. But if little warning here, I love this. A friend of mine sent it. This is a German word, Kumperspeck. It's excessive weight gain from emotional overeating, literally meaning bacon grief. I've got some bacon grief going on here. Uh, I joke with some friends, you know, happy hour never tasted so good. And I 
uh, first grocery store I went and uh, run, I bought a bunch of chocolate. So um, we want to make sure that we're rewarding ourselves, but um, we're also making sure that that's not having a detrimental effect on the other aspects that's really important, and that's keeping our health. You're not always going to get it right. You're going to succeed and you may fail. You're going to fail. That's okay. Loneliness is real, even if you're not actually alone. I know I'm the only one. I'm a sole proprietor. So I'm alone in worrying about my business. But here's some tips. You want to find some positive news. And I hope that I was sharing with you maybe some trends that might get you to start to think about some positive things or think about uh, old William, who just turned 104 years old. Those are positive things. Look at the sky in LA. It's clear all over the world. The air has cleared up it's so quickly. That's wonderful. Um, lean in versus spacing out. You know, I know that we want to just turn away from everything that's happening, but keep aware of what's going on and see where the opportunity is. is. Check in with those that are in your tribe, those that you love. Just pick up that phone for no reason at all. Hold virtual meetings, um, have lunch, coffee. This afternoon at six o'clock, I'm meeting with my friend and we're having a virtual happy hour. Give yourself the gift of that. And share some funny pictures and videos. All is lost if we cannot laugh. So I wanted to show you this. Um, I, you know, I, I'm worried about the connection, but if anyone hasn't seen this, this is hilarious. This is about uh, a woman who is on a Zoom meeting at work and she doesn't turn off her camera when she goes to the bathroom. So we need to find times just to laugh, laugh at ourselves, laugh at others, be kind to yourself. Here are some of the best practices. You wanna set up a dedicated and comfortable workplace. Uh, using your laptop while you're sitting in bed or at your dining room table when people are coming in and out of the kitchen and your kids are running around. This is not only not professional, but it's very distracting for you. You need to set up a dedicated and comfortable workspace. Once I lived in a, a house in Los Angeles, I set up my office in the closet. I had an extra closet and it was very small, but I could go in there and be completely focused. This is important, you deserve this. And it might take you some time to set that up, but you owe it to yourself. Limit your tasks to three per day or not. Give yourself the grace of maybe not doing anything that day so you can reorganize your thinking and hit it the next day. Engage in honest conversations to include what you need. And we're all making mistakes like uh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, you know, uh, sincerely apologize when things haven't gone well, business-wise and otherwise. Develop empathy for others. There may be people who are not meeting your deadlines. Maybe they're not clear on what you need. There's a whole nother class that I'm working on that's on how to manage remote employees. And I'm getting calls from my clients of people who are angry at their staff. But my first question is, did you set it up right? What's going on in their real life? Do you know? Are they worrying? Are they sick? Are someone in their family sick? We need to develop empathy with others during this time. It is not business as usual. Take breaks. Check your work and help others by identifying and helping to fix mistakes. On a personal level, move your body every day. You know, uh, just get up, dance around the living room. If you can, go out for a walk. If you have any home gym equipment, set up a routine. This is very important. Create a sleep time ritual. There's no excuse these days not to, to really work at getting at least eight hours sleep. We need it to be able to deal with everything that's going on. Set a time to check the news, but only twice a day. Uh, and by the way, if anything dramatic happens, like the thing you want to hear, there's a vaccine developed or we've stopped the spread, you will know. You don't need to be checking the news all the time. It's, uh, it's just getting worse at the moment. <laughs> Eat healthy and fresh foods. Really, you know, spend time creating some fun with the preparation of food, but make sure you're getting in your vegetables and you're not just sitting there drinking your wine and eating your chocolate every day. You wanna stay healthy. Find something to laugh about, reward yourself and be kind to yourself. Slow down, 
and focus on quality time with those you love, including your furry family. So this is, this is really important. Here's someone I just love and admire, Nelson Mandela. He said, it always seems impossible until it's done. And every time I think about Nelson Mandela, it puts a smile on my face because it seems that everything I've seen, he always was smiling. Now, this is a man that spent 27 years alone in prison, and he came out ready to change the world. We can stay at home for uh, uh, some months, a year, and that's our goal, that we come out ready to take on the world with a smile on our face. I love this quote, it says, this is the first time in the history of humanity that the entire world turned united against a common foe. We're being presented with an opportunity for future cooperation as we come to recognize that borders are fictions and we are global kin. Let's not just make this about the virus. Let's make this about evolving to a better way of being. I love this. There's a reason that you're in this position as an entrepreneur, as a small business person right now at this moment. The challenge for us is to find peace with this in this new reality, to focus on the part you play in this drama and to find your opportunity to serve. One day, your grandchildren are going to ask you about this time in history, and you will be able to say not only that you survived, but that you took care of good care of yourself, you took good care of your loved ones, and that you were there to rebuild a better world. This is a statement that I say to myself, it's like a mantra, even in these really dark days. You know, you gotta find a way to believe that something wonderful is about to happen. And so uh, I wanted to share this with you um, I'm worried about time and I'm worried about connectivity, but it was a love song to the world that talked about finding gratitude. Gratitude always helps us to move through the cycle of grief and to get up and to carry on. For me, well, I'm grateful for you. I, I'm very grateful for the opportunity that th preparing this allowed me to reorganize my thinking and to be able to really think about what part do I play in this and how can I be prepared for the next stage of what the world will need. Uh, I'm Kathy Markov. This was put on by Mission Community Services. Uh, I welcome all of you to reach out for me to me at any time. Uh, I'm happy to share the PowerPoint or any other resources that I have. I'm deeply committed to ensuring that each and every one of us stay healthy and that we're there for uh, emerging from this in a stronger, more united and better world. And with that, I'll turn it over to Liz. Thanks, Kathy. Well, first of all, wow. So many takeaways. I don't even know where to begin, um, but I, I just love how you acknowledge that, you know, this this thing that's happening is causing us to have to um, really look at ourselves and and acknowledge that you know we got stuff that we got to deal with before we can get back to business as normal. And I love all of the tips and the resources. And I am gonna ask you to share with us, um, maybe in an email, some of those video clips and things so that we can, in the Mission Community Services um, email newsletter that goes out, share some of those as just you know a resource tool for the, the folks that are with us and the folks that will get a chance to listen to the recording. Um, you are an amazing lady and we are grateful to have you here in our community and uh, again, uh, I encourage everyone if you get a chance and you need some help, give Kathy a shout out, you know, connect with her. Um, share on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever social sites, the experience that you had with us today um, because this is all about us taking care of ourselves and then um, doing the things that we need to do for our family and then doing the things we need to do for our community because together we can rebuild an amazing and beautiful world and get back 
to being in a place where we have a vibrant community where everyone's needs are getting served. Mission Community Services hosted and sponsored this event and I'm grateful to be able to work with them. So again, check in with them if you need help getting your unemployment for the self-employed, learning more about the IDLE or the PPP or any of the stimulus or even other things that are going on with your business, contact them. They will get you scheduled with a consultant and um, together we can help each other out and move forward. So thanks everyone for your time today. Um, go out and make it a great day. Enjoy the weekend. Take care of yourselves. And next Friday, we're going to give you an update on the CARES Act. Some more information now that some of the things are actually in place and the wheels have started rolling, we can tell you a little bit more. I do have one quick question and then we're going to sign off. So let me just check the question quickly. Um, okay, so we have someone asking to share the PowerPoint. So maybe you can do that and we can get it out to folks. All right, well, yes, thanks so, so much. Okay, thanks, Kathy. So thanks so much, everyone, for being with us. And again, Kathy, on behalf of Mission Community Services and our larger community, thank you for your brilliance. Um, go out and make it a great day, everyone, and we'll talk to you next week.